We've got our final closing keynote speech now, um, and I'd really like to welcome Simon Shepherd, who's the director of the Butler Trust, and Sarah Cadden, who works at County Durham Youth Offending Service. Uh, and really, the title for this is The Importance of Recognising Success. Thank you. <laughs> no, Claire's chosen. Do you have my <laughs> presentation on it? Uh oh. Otherwise, we're. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to do. Uh, it's okay. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm going to have to do my uh, my stand-up routine, which is, to be honest, a little bit blue for this audience. Um, <laughs> I, I don't really know. Um, I don't really know how, how how to follow that last um, session really because that was in, incredibly inspiring and, and well done to. To, to all of you, but actually I, we would like to shift the focus now actually away from the young people to those of you who work with them because I think if you listen to all three of their stories, well that's a kind of tribute to what, you know, uh, what they've achieved and that's absolutely extraordinary. I think all three of them would agree that it was a large part of that and we heard from them was the support that they got from people like you that made a real difference to their lives. And that's why, thank you, that's why um, I'm delighted to be here to talk about the importance of sort of recognising success, but it's actually it's about the importance of staff recognition within the criminal justice system. Now, I run a charity called the Butler Trust, and the Butler Trust has an annual award scheme for people working in prisons and probation and the youth justice sector. And these awards were launched back in 1985. They were in memory of this chap who was uh, Rab Butler. He was a Home Secretary in the late 50s and early 1960s. He was a Tory, but we can keep that quiet. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm only saying, but um, anyway, he, uh, uh, he, when, he, when he became Home Secretary, he was really upset to discover that the prison population was 24,000, if you can believe it. Um, and we get around 350 nominations a year from across the sector, many of them actually from uh, offenders, uh, not only from people's colleagues and their managers. And we give around 10 awards and 20 commendations. And those awards and commendations are presented each year by the Princess Royal, who's our patron. And we have an award ceremony in uh, St. James's Palace um, or, um, or occasionally um, in Buckingham Palace. Now, actually, we give uh, awards to people often for doing something innovative and creative, and that's rocket science there on the left, it really is. Uh, but we also give awards, just as importantly, for people for doing their ordinary job extraordinarily well, or what my trustees call good eggs, which is why there's an egg on the screen. My trustees are very posh. You think I'm posh? You should meet my trustees. So they call them good eggs. <laughs> now, if I may, uh, we've just got time. I'd like to show you a very quick video which illustrates a little bit more about the awards and what they're all about. Now, this actually focuses on somebody who works in prisons, but their principles apply across the, across the whole criminal justice sector. So I hope this will work. Have we got any sound? Do we have any sound? I just thought, I'm good with people. I think I could do this. So I applied, and here I am, 10 years later. You know that if she says she's gonna do something, it's gonna get done. So it's, it's the balance that, as a prisoner, that you would want with an officer, and Mrs. Hare is, she's got it. I always see if um, she can't do something, then it can't be done got time for everyone, so we all got time for her. She always has support and advice for not only Is staff, it audible at the back? prisoners as well. She's what they call the go-to lady. I think Bernie was one of the first people I ever met when I started the job. Uh, she took me around B-Wing, Blackthorn Unit. Since then I've worked with her at different times. I've only been here 15 months, but I've worked with her on various occasions. She's funny, she's lively. Prisoners seem to love her and she's a really good member of staff. She really helped me out during my first year. My favourite part of the job is it's the day-to-day -day interaction with the men. Um, my favourite place is on the landings. I don't like to be in an office. 
I like to be in the in the thick of it, really. So it's because, as far as I'm concerned, that is what the job is about. Yes. When I read, when I'd initially read everything that had been said about me by by the men on on the Sea Wing, I was a little bit. I was quite humbled, to be honest. I just think that we're all part of of one puzzle. We all work in this place together. We all do our bit in different ways. When I first came on to Sea Wing, Miss Hare was supporting my cellmate um, who had post-traumatic stress disorder from his time in the army. And Miss Hare came and spoke to him uh, at least once a week just to make sure that he, he was OK. Um, and supported him through, again, his, his early time in prison. Anything they tell me doesn't faze me, you know, and I like to make time. I, I tend to try and make as much time for the, for the, for the men as I can, really. If you cross Bernard Bess, um, run. <laughs> can I say that? If I need to be scary, I can be scary. There is a line. There's only so far you can push me, and not to mistake my my kindness and my helpfulness and my the way I am on the wing as weakness. Showing a bit of leg like that, love. <laughs> oh, if my colleagues were to describe me, I'd have to think, to be honest. I don't know, probably that I'm, I don't know, loud, <laughs> boisterous, a bit gobby. Bernie's loud. There's always a bit of laughter coming from the office or off the landing, and nine times out of ten it's... So it's Bernie having a little bit of a carry on with colleagues or prisoners or, you know, she's, uh, she, li she likes to make it fun. Yeah, she just likes up the room and everyone just knows when you say Bernie or Bernadette, they just know instantly who you're talking about. I'd like to think that, that I've done something maybe to stop somebody coming back that's, you know, something I've said or done has maybe helped somebody to change their life, turn their life around. That'll do me. So I'd now like to hand over, if I may, to one of uh, our Butler Trust winners from 2016, 15, 16. So. I'm Sarah Caden, and I'm a Practice Improvement Officer with County Durham Youth Offending Service. And I was a joint Butler Trust winner in 2015-16. And I won jointly with my colleague, Susan Stewart, who is an incredibly talented and inspiring speech and language therapist. And here you have us pictured in our natural environment. So in about 2012, I started to get a very big bee in my bonnet. And it was a bee that I just couldn't shake. And it was after reading the Children's Commissioner research, nobody made the connection. And it was that bit about 60 to 90% of young people who offend have a speech, language, or communication need. Most of the young people that we work with have a speech, language, or communication need. Now, I'd previously been a case manager for many years, and I could think back to particular young people and I knew that this is what we'd missed. So I knew that absolutely, as a service, we had to do something about it. And out of that, bother the some be, our speech, language, and communication needs strategy was born. The strategy that won us our Butler Trust Award. And all it was, in a nutshell, was about making sure our staff were trained in speech, language, and communication needs, that we had the right systems and processes, that we had communication-friendly resources, and that our young people had an ac access to a speech and language therapist. So 
we scrubbed up, we went to the palace, we ate little sandwiches and tiny scones, we drank tea from delicate cups, we even experimented with our little fingers. We had warm Prosecco on the train on the way home. <laughs> and Susan's mam was the most deliriously proud and excited mam on the planet ever. It was a perfect day. But better than that, bigger than that, was what we knew it really meant. It was saying that this work that we were passionate about was important. Getting that Butler Trust Award said to me and Susan, do you know what? You're doing a really good job. Keep on at that. And also what we truly believed was it would help us get that message out to other youth offending teams. So as well as our day in the palace, we both took part in the Butler Trust Development Programme. So Simon referred to the award being for the rocket scientists and the good eggs. Well, imagine being able to get away from the desk and the day job every now and again and spend some time with the rocket scientists and the good eggs. It was a very rewarding and refreshing experience. I also had a Butler Trust mentor, and that meant that I had somebody that I could speak to every now and again about any ideas that I had. And she also, in particular, helped me think about how we might market some of our work. So I think that as youth offending services, in a time of dwindling resources, we have to think about working a little bit differently. And some of you may have noticed the clear cut communication logo in the top right hand corner of the slides. And some of you might have even been to our clear cut communication stand. And if you haven't, why not? <coughs> but don't worry, we'll be here again tomorrow. Come and talk to us then. Now, these are all the areas that are currently using our resources. And we truly believe that having the Butler Trust Award, having that status, has helped us get to this many people. I would say that County Durham Youth Offending Service has an excellent reputation. And I think that a lot of that is to do with our long-standing relationship with the Butler Trust. Our head of service has a commendation. One of our volunteers has a commendation. Susan and I have our award, and we have another member of staff shortlisted this year. Staff who work for youth offending teams are fantastic. Um, Kezia, when you were doing your bit and you were talking about when you came out and the youth offending team were there for you and their passion, I meet staff like that all the time. And I stand on the stall and all day long I talk to people who come up and they're passionate about the work they do. Um, I think we need to make sure that those people know it. Obviously, ideally, we'd give people pay rises, we'd all get a pay rise. But whilst we can't do that, a simple thing that we can do is make sure that they know that we really value the work that we do. And what you can do is simply nominate them for a Butler Trust Award. I think it's really sad when I hear that they don't get many nominations from youth offending teams, and that does not reflect the excellent work that takes place in youth offending teams up and down this country. I would just like to end with my favourite photograph from the palace, and this is the one that my daughters refer to as, oh, the one where Mam's doing the robot for Princess Anne. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, if you need to get in touch with us, um, I was expecting an email to come up there, but it didn't. Uh, come and talk to us at the Clear Cut Communication Stand. Thank you. I'm going to give back to Simon. Thank you very much. Um. To, to be honest, Sarah just sort of said all the things that I was going to say, really. Uh, um, you know, why, why bother? Why does it matter? Um, why do we need awards? Because they, because they help to highlight excellence. There are lots and lots of good things going on across the criminal justice system. We heard about some of the amazing things that are going on within the youth justice system. But you wouldn't believe it from the press. And, you know, we all know that you do an incredibly difficult but important job, and you get very little thanks for that job. And, and that's why I think things like staff recognition schemes and, and award schemes like ours can make a real difference, and Sarah's helped to explain some of that. And you know what? We can only give awards and commendations to a tiny fraction of the people that get nominated, but that's not the point. I met a guy in a prison once, 
a, a PE instructor. He said, I've got 21 Butler Trusts, he said. I thought, well, I've never heard of him, so I don't quite know how he's got 21 Butler Trust Awards. He had never got a Butler Trust Award. He'd been nominated 21 times in 30 years that he'd been in the prison system. And he was proud, of pun as, proud as punch about every one of those. He had them all, apparently, uh, uh, mounted in his, at, at home in, um, in a frame. So he was, he was really pleased about that. And that matters, you know, because it says your work, that person's work has not gone unnoticed. Even if we can't end up, they don't end up coming to the palace. And the other thing is, it's not just about the awards, it's also about our development program, and it's also about spreading the word more widely, as Sarah said, about some of the outstanding work that you guys do. But you've got to be in it to win it. And um, the truth is that we don't get a lot of nominations from the youth justice system. It's a, a real disappointment to me. We get around 350 nominations. I can tell you that we only receive about 15 nominations a year from youth justice. To be honest, guys, that's pathetic because you've got a lot of people doing a lot of amazing work. And we really need, if we're to do justice by you, we need you to take part in, in the awards. So please, if you know someone who goes above and beyond, then please nominate them for an award. And it's very easy to do. You go onto our, our, our website, you can download the forms. It's dead simple. It's an annual cycle. At the moment, we're judging the next year's awards, and the next closing date is not till next June, but it doesn't matter. You can nominate at any time. And um, finally, just in answer to the, the original question that we posed is, why does it matter? Why does staff recognition matter? Because you're worth it. I'm afraid, having said that, I'm now going to do that poncy thing and bugger straight off because my train leaves any minute. So if you'll excuse me, have a really nice time t tomorrow, and thank you. Bye-bye.